Faith and Works Chapter 3 Christ our Righteousness If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God requires that we confess our sins and humble our hearts before Him, but at the same time we should have confidence in Him as a tender Father who will not forsake those who put their trust in Him. Many of us walk by sight and not by faith. We believe the things that are seen but do not appreciate the precious promises given us in God's word. And yet we cannot dishonor God more decidedly than by showing that we distrust what he says and question whether the Lord is in earnest with us or is deceiving us. God does not give us up because of our sins. We may make mistakes and grieve His Spirit, but when we repent and come to Him with contrite hearts, He will not turn us away. There are hindrances to be removed. Wrong feelings have been cherished, and there have been pride, self-sufficiency, impatience, and murmurings. All these separate us from God. Sins must be confessed. There must be a deeper work of grace in the heart. Those who feel weak and discouraged may become strong men of God and do noble work for the Master, but they must work from a high standpoint. They must be influenced by no selfish motives. We must learn in the school of Christ nothing but His righteousness can entitle us to one of the blessings of the covenant of grace. We have long desired and tried to obtain these blessings, but have not received them because we have cherished the idea that we could do something to make ourselves worthy of them. We have not looked away from ourselves, believing that Jesus is a living Savior. We must not think that our own grace and merits will save us, the grace of Christ is our only hope of salvation. Through his prophets the Lord promises, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. We must believe the naked promise and not accept feeling for faith. When we trust God fully, when we rely upon the merits of Jesus as a sin-pardoning Savior, we shall receive all the help that we can desire. We look to self as though we had power to save ourselves, but Jesus died for us because we are helpless to do this. In Him is our hope, our justification, our righteousness. We should not despond and fear that we have no Saviour or that He has no thoughts of mercy toward us. At this very time He is carrying on His work in our behalf, inviting us to come to Him in our helplessness and be saved. We dishonour Him by our unbelief. It is astonishing how we treat our very best friend how little confidence we repose in Him who is able to save to the uttermost and who has given us every evidence of His great love. My brethren, are you expecting that your merit will recommend you to the favor of God, thinking that you must be free from sin before you trust His power to save? If this is the struggle going on in your mind, I fear you will gain no strength and will finally become discouraged. In the wilderness, when the Lord permitted poisonous serpents to sting the rebellious Israelites, Moses was directed to lift up a brazen serpent and bid all the wounded 
look to it and live. But many saw no help in this heaven-appointed remedy. The dead and dying were all around them, and they knew without divine help their fate was certain. But they would lament their wounds, their pains, their sure death, until their strength was gone and their eyes were glazed when they might have had instant healing. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so was the Son of Man lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If you are conscious of your sins, do not devote all your powers to mourning over them, but look and live. Jesus is our only Saviour. And although millions who need to be healed will reject His offered mercy, not one who trusts in His merits will be left to perish. While we realize our helpless condition without Christ, we must not be discouraged. We must rely upon a crucified and risen Saviour, poor, sin-sick, discouraged soul, Look and live. Jesus has pledged his word. He will save all who come unto him. Come to Jesus and receive rest and peace. You may have the blessing even now. Satan suggests that you are helpless and cannot bless yourself. It is true, you are helpless, but lift up Jesus before him. I have a risen Saviour. In Him I trust, and He will never suffer me to be confounded. In His name I triumph. He is my righteousness and my crown of rejoicing. Let no one here feel that his case is hopeless, for it is not. You may see that you are sinful and undone, but it is just on this account that you need a Saviour. If you have sins to confess, lose no time. These moments are golden. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled, for Jesus has promised it. Precious Saviour, his arms are open to receive us, and His great heart of love is waiting to bless us. Some seem to feel that they must be on probation and must prove to the Lord that they are reformed before they can claim His blessing. But these dear souls may claim the blessing even now. They must have His grace, the Spirit of Christ, to help their infirmities, or they cannot form a Christian character. Jesus loves to have us come to Him just as we are, sinful, helpless, dependent. Repentance, as well as forgiveness, is the gift of God through Christ. It is through the influence of the Holy Spirit that we are convicted of sin and feel our need of pardon. None but the contrite are forgiven, but it is the grace of God that makes the heart penitent. He is acquainted with all our weaknesses and infirmities, and He will help us. Some who come to God by repentance and confession, and even believe that their sins are forgiven, still fail of claiming, as they should, the promises of God. They do not see that Jesus is an ever-present Saviour, and they are not ready to commit the keeping of their souls to Him, relying upon Him to perfect the work of grace begun in their hearts. While they think they are committing themselves to God, there is a great deal of self-dependence. There are conscientious souls that trust partly to God and partly to themselves. They do not look to God to be kept by His power, but depend upon watchfulness against temptation 
and the performance of certain duties for acceptance with Him. There are no victories in this kind of faith. Such persons toil to no purpose. Their souls are in continual bondage, and they find no rest until their burdens are laid at the feet of Jesus. There is need of constant watchfulness and of earnest, loving devotion, but these will come naturally when the soul is kept by the power of God through faith. We can do nothing, absolutely nothing, to commend ourselves to divine favor. We must not trust at all to ourselves or to our good works, but when as erring, sinful beings we come to Christ, we may find rest in His love. God will accept everyone that comes to Him, trusting wholly in the merits of a crucified Savior. Love springs up in the heart. There may be no ecstasy of feeling, but there is an abiding, peaceful trust. Every burden is light, for the yoke which Christ imposes is easy. Duty becomes a delight, and sacrifice a pleasure. The path that before seemed shrouded in darkness becomes bright with beams from the Sun of Righteousness. This is walking in the light as Christ is in the light.